There has been some drama on the tennis courts, obviously, yes. in the Australian Open. Hi, Mike. Hi, yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, Dan Evans, look, but the, the picture behind you says it all, doesn't it? Broken dreams and a broken racket. Yes. And describing all the drama this morning for the BBC is Britain's Naomi Brody. I know. Hello. Morning. Talk through Morning. What happened? Because there were high hopes, weren't there? Given his form this year, the way it sold through that first round match against David Goff, and then he had a rest. Because uh, in the second round, his opponent was injured. And so going in, admittedly, against the number nine seed, there were high hopes, would you say? Or was that me just with false optimism, do you think? No, <laughs> I think that's totally fair. He's had a fantastic year so far. He played the, the first tournament was the ATP Cup. That was a team event. And in his singles, Dan was yeah. undefeated. Then he played Sydney last week and he had a great run through, made it through to the semi final before he lost to the guy that beat Andy in the final. Yeah. Um, and as you say, he got off to a fantastic start at the Australian Open, had a bye in his second yeah. walkover in his second round. His opponent withdrew, was obviously scared to play him. Um, <laughs> so he was today, yeah, he then trying to get well. into the last 16 for the second time in his career. We can have a look at what happened. Early on, something weird happened, didn't it? Some karaoke somewhere in <laughs> Melbourne. It must have been strange on the radio when you were covering it this morning. Just it, We can see was. some pictures as, as well of how upset um, Dan Evans was by this disturbance to his concentration. The song was Let It Be, and he wouldn't let it be, would he? Let's have a look at the pictures, so we can have a look now and see how he was um, just unhappy about that. And I don't know if it took any of his concentration away. So these are them coming out with those high hopes, as I say. I mean, admittedly, against one of the rising stars, the number nine seed, Felix mm. Ogur Aliassime of um, Canada, only 21. Yeah, and, so and 10 years younger. And he's been pinned as being one of the big coats for a long time, but we can see here, this is when Dan, as you say, it was so early on in the match as well, but they're known for being a very rowdy, rowdy crowd in Australia, and I think this year especially, Nick actually referred to them as a zoo. He said, I don't know what I've done yeah. to the crowd here, but they're a zoo this year. Um, and a few of the players have been saying you can feel that they've been locked down for so long because yeah. there's just so much energy and it's a very fun tournament, but it definitely distracts us down. Yeah. And what was a shame is that he matched, he really did match, didn't he? The Canadian in the first set, 5-4 yeah. down. Then he made just a couple of errors, just those fine margins, a couple of errors cost him because then his confidence went and, I mean, Ali Asim said, said he played the best tennis he'd ever played in the Grand Slam. Well, exactly that. It, it was really close in the first set. Dan missed a breakpoint opportunity and from then on he wasn't able to get it back and said, you know, the difference in their performances, Felix was so good, but Dan just wasn't up to it today. Yeah, so the last of the, the seven Brits involved in the singles to go. What would you make of the week overall then? Obviously we had the disappointment for Emma Raducanu with the blister. Andy Murray... Well, Go back three years, we're amazing to see him at the Australian <laughs> Open again now, isn't it? But he was really hard on himself afterwards. He was, and, and it was a similar story for Dan today as it was for Andy and his match. Both just didn't put their best performances out there on the court, but have both had fantastic starts to the year. Dan himself said, you know, he's not going to let this loss get to him because he has got off to such a good start, and uh, he, he wants to continue the positivity for the year. I like the positivity, and I, I think when they're hard on themselves, you mm. know that they're fighting, and they, it means so much to them, and that's why the fans love mm. them, isn't it? Um, can't be all negative. We've still got Brits in the doubles. We do. Lots of them and lots in the wheelchair event as well. We're actually dominating the doubles yeah. at the moment. Um, we have done for a few years now. Why? Um, Why do we do so well? I actually don't know. I, I have no answer for you there. We, <laughs> yeah. We've got a, the British doubles men's coach, Louis Cayo. The mm. uh, LTA got him involved very early on, years ago. Um, and I think he's the best doubles coach in the world. So I think that's probably maybe something that to do help. with it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah, they've just got a great programme for, for doubles at, at the LTA. And yeah. uh, they're producing players after players. And so really good in the wheelchair tennis, which starts tomorrow as well. Look forward to that. So, so much to look forward to. And of course, who is going to win the men's and the women's singles tight? So I feel like we're watching it? tennis here as well. Me oh. too. I'll give you a caress now. We'll talk about well football. Thanks, you know Naomi. What? I think we're kind of it's actually really balanced on the sofa. Because you and I uh, don't what, have... What are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> Great height. Smaller, 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 smaller. We have different stature, and then we've got the the tallies here. Yeah, Although Ben Ben did call Naomi Shorty earlier. It's quite nice. I've never yeah. had that. Never it's had almost that. half a foot between you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, five inches. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we are. Anyway, thanks, Naomi. Thanks, Naomi. Great coverage as well on Radio Five Live Sports Extra this week. Let's.